So when we were talking about the internal loadings of objects, we were talking about the forces and moments that are going on inside of an object that are keeping the object from being broken apart by external forces. And so there's two forces that we talk about. We have a normal force which is going along an object and that can be what we've talked about before as in tension or compression, but both of those are normal forces. They are acting along the member or the beam in this case. And a shear force is a force acting perpendicular to the object. So if I'm holding this rod with this hand and pushing down on this end with my finger, in order for it to be in equilibrium, the sum of the forces has to be equal to zero. So if we sum forces in the y direction, we have a force pushing down on this end and we have a force pushing up on this end. And the way that that force gets all the way over to here is the internal shear forces of this beam. So basically, if we go down to the molecular level of this, we have the molecules being pushed down on this end, going down, and then the ones right next to it are pushing back up to keep those ones in equilibrium. But the ones next to it are pushing down and the other ones are pushing up. And so that continues going up and down all the way over to here and that transfers that load over there with the forces in the y direction. And so that is called a shear force. And you can imagine that on this end, there's not gonna be any forces, only shear force in this end, but nothing going on over at this end if I'm holding, holding the rod right here. And so that is what shear force is. And so the internal moments would be if I'm bending this like this, well, the internal moments of in this member will be pushing it back down so that it won't bend. And the way I can bend it is bending it hard enough that the internal forces can't resist bending and the rod will actually deform. But they're going to resist that bending and that is how this object doesn't just bend with little or no force. It is because the internal forces or moments are resisting that movement. And that is the way it can be in equilibrium. And so in statics, mostly what we're gonna talk about is the shear force and the moment because we've already talked about the normal force in analyzing trusses and frames and machines and those are those tension and compression forces. And the normal force is represented by an N Shear force is represented by a V, and the moments are represented by an M. And the way you can find those internal forces is by using the method of sections like how we've done in analyzing trusses. So we do that by cutting the member where we want to find those internal forces. Say here at point B, we will cut it and expose those internal forces and represent them as external forces. That way we can use equilibrium equations to solve for those unknown forces, which in this case are those internal forces which we are trying to find. And so that's what we've done here, is we have cut this beam, this cantilever beam at point B, and then we have exposed its internal forces and written them on both sides of this beam that we have cut and spread apart. And so you'll notice that these shear forces are the same, these normal forces are the same, and these moments are the same in magnitude, but they are going the opposite direction. And then we've also represented these reaction forces at A as their different forces and moments. And so the way we would find these internal forces is we'd pick one of these sides and use equilibrium equations to find those forces. And we'd probably not want to pick this side because we have these unknown forces, which are re our reaction forces. So we are probably given P1 and P2, and so if we solved on this side, we would be able to solve for these unknown internal forces. And as you can see, we've been only finding these internal forces at this one point, but we can graph those internal forces along the whole length of the object or beam you're analyzing, and that will give you shear and moment diagrams which we will cover in a later video. The link to that video will be at the end of this video. You can click on that link and check that out. And the way you can tell whether those forces are positive or negative is conventionally that the normal force is positive if it is in tension, 
the shear force is positive if it is causing the beam or object to rotate clockwise. So as you can see, if we put a pin here in the middle, these shear forces would cause this beam to rotate clockwise, as well as these ones clockwise, clockwise, and that is a positive force. And a positive moment is when the moments are causing the beam to concave upwards. And so if we were trying to bend this beam, we would be trying to rotate it on the ends so that it would concave up like this. And if you want to think of it this way, that would cause a smiley face shape. And that is positive. And so we usually use these sign conventions to keep track of what way is positive and which way is negative. Obviously the opposite of these directions would be negative. And so this would be concave down. So like this frowny face, um, this would be causing counterclockwise rotation and a negative normal force would be in compression. And like I said, those aren't necessary, but it helps you and others know what you're talking about when you say positive or negative. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can leave them down in the comments. Also, you should check out the new designs I've been creating with the student engineering logo. I've been putting them on shirts, hoodies, cups, and stickers. And there are links to that all down in the description. You can go and buy some awesome student engineering merch. If you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer, student engineering. My goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So if you found this helpful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe.